You don't need super expensive plugins and equipment or a high level recording studio to get a professional sounding mix anymore. Every producer and mix engineer needs these five free plugins. You're gonna wanna learn about all of these, but stick around to the end because the last one is an absolute necessity for a producer or engineer on a budget. Before I go ahead and share these free plugins with you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, click the bell. That really helps me out so I can give more of these mixing tips and tricks videos to you guys. What is up artists, producers, and mix engineers? I hope you're doing all right amongst this craziness in the world right now. I hope you're able to stay safe and creative and possibly use your music platform to truly express yourself during these tough times. Today, I wanna to share with you my five favorite free effects plugins. I'm frequently experimenting with new plugins and these free ones have made a big impact on my mixes over the years. Make sure you stay to the end because the fifth one is an absolute essential. So let's get into it. The first plugin I'm going to show you is this Rough Rider 3 compressor. This compressor is really good at smashing your audio and creating some hard transients. I like to put this on drums, drum buses, or anything that I really want to control and squash. You can also use this for parallel processing. I would highly recommend doing that for drums or for vocals. As you can see here, it is pretty intuitive. It has its ratio knob. It has the makeup gain, an attack release, mix in knob, output level. On this side is the input level, side chain frequency. I don't often use this for side chaining, but that's something you can definitely try out. I might end up trying that out soon. And this button, which I really love, it's called the full bandwidth button. And when you turn this on, it just creates this nice warmth to your signal, which you often aren't able to get with digital compressors. So let's hear what it sounds like on these drums. So this is without any compression on it. Now we're gonna add in our compressor. This compressor has some really great presets. I usually will go with this just a little bit off the top one and then adjust from there. Here are these drums without the compression. Now we're gonna add it in. You hear how it's just giving it a little more punch. It's a little more controlled. It's starting to clip on my fader, so I'm just gonna turn down the output level a little bit. So I maintain that tone that I get, but I don't get any clipping distortion from the fader. The next plugin we're gonna check out is the Vohala Super Massive, and this is a reverb. We're gonna try putting this reverb on these piano chords. Here are the chords with no reverb. Now we add this reverb on. So as you can see, this reverb is not too complicated. It has its mix knob, its width, which is affecting the stereo imaging. This is the pre-delay knob. It sets how long of a delay there is before the reverb kicks in. Feedback is how much reverb there is. And then you've got your EQ settings here. One feature of this reverb that I really like is the warp knob, which gives it this unique vibrato on the reverb signal. So we're just gonna adjust these settings just a little bit. Hear what it sounds like now. Hear that tone. Thank you. 
So I recommend trying this out on keys, synths, and definitely vocals too. All right, moving on to the next plugin. The next plugin I wanna talk about is one I showed you in my compressor video, and that is this MJUC Junior plugin, which is a variable mu compressor. I'm gonna show you how I use this compressor on my bass. This gives the bass some warmth and it gives it a control so it mixes well with the rest of the instruments in the track. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple compressor. It has its compression threshold, a makeup gain, and then this is like an attack knob. So I'm gonna keep it on slow. This is an 808 bass. We're gonna try this without any compression first. Right now we're gonna put our compressor on. And I've set the threshold to about 25 and I've turned the makeup gain up to about four and I've kept this attack as slow. This is adding some subtle warmth. It's controlling the signal so it's not overpowering yet you're maintaining the loudness and that's gonna make it blend really well with the rest of your track. The next plugin I wanna show you is a transient shaper. So I'm gonna put this one on this vocal sample that I have. This is what it looks like. It's pretty simple to use. It just has this transient knob. If you wanna reduce transients, turn it towards sweet. If you want it to magnify the transients, you turn it towards bitter. It has different attack speeds, fast, medium slow it also has this period which is a release essentially and i usually keep it on it as a short release so this is the vocal without the transient shaper Do you? So I want to reduce some of these transients, so I'm gonna turn it towards the sweet direction, and I'm gonna have a slow or medium attack. So this is just sweetening up those vocals and taking out some of those hard transients. I would use this plugin on a more percussive sound such as drums when I want to magnify some of these transients and in which case I would use a faster attack and turn this knob in the bitter direction. Okay lastly I want to show you a multi-band compression tool and this is my favorite free plugin that I have. I'm gonna show you what it sounds like on this vocal. I'll keep this transient shaper on and I will add this compressor. This compressor allows you to easily target frequencies and reduce them when they are too loud in the mix or too harsh towards your ears. It's a very transparent compressor, meaning it won't affect the color or character of your signal. It won't add any warmth. It will really maintain your signal just reducing the frequencies that you don't want when they're punching through in certain cases so in this case there's a lot of high frequencies that I think are a little bit harsh so I'm gonna go into my higher band I'm going to turn on my threshold and this is essentially working as a de -esser. adjust the bands as you might do with an EQ using this Q factor and this frequency adjuster oh, yeah. So as you can see, it is reducing some of these high frequencies as they cut through a little too harshly. The next thing I want to add is this lower mid to around 500 hertz where it ends up being a little bit boxy. So as you can see, this is a very visual multiband compressor. It's easy to target frequencies, and you can really see the way it reduces them. I'll always use this on vocals, and I'll frequently put it on mix buses and my master bus. 
please don't forget to subscribe. That really means a lot. Click the bell to get those notifications. Stay safe out there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about mixing, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Click the bell. Give the video a like. And let me know in the comments what you want to learn about next. Catch you in the next video. Peace.